And was Corey Lewandowski one such individual? And again, can you remind me uh, what character? Cor well, Corey Lewandowski is the president's former campaign manager, correct? Correct. Did he have any official position in the Trump administration? I don't believe so. Your report describes an incident in the Oval Office involving Mr. Lewandowski on June 19, 2017, at volume 2, page 91. Is that correct? I'm sorry, what's the citation, sir? Page 91. Of uh, the second volume? Yes. And uh, where A meeting in the Oval Office between Mr. Lewandowski and the President. Okay. And that was just two days after the President called Don McGahn at home and ordered him to fire you. Is that correct? Apparently so. So right after his White House counsel, Mr. McGahn, refused to follow the president's order to fire you, the president came up with a new plan, and that was to go around all of his senior advisors and government aides to have a private citizen try to limit your investigation. What did the president tell Mr. Lewandowski to do? Do you recall he told him he dictated a message to Mr. Lewandowski for Attorney General Sessions and asked him to write it down? Is that correct? True. And do you, did you and your team see this handwritten message? Uh, I'm not going to get into what we may or may not have uh, included in our investigation. Okay, the message directed Sessions to give, and, and I'm quoting from your report, to give a public speech saying that he planned to meet with the special prosecutor to explain this is very unfair and let the special prosecutor move forward with investigating election meddling for future elections. That's at page 91. Is that correct? Yes, I see that. Thank you. Yes, it is. In other words, Mr. Lewandowski, a private citizen, was instructed by the President of the United States to deliver a message from the President to the Attorney General that directed him to limit your investigation, correct? Correct. And at this time, Mr. Sessions was still recused from oversight of your investigation, correct? I'm sorry, could you restate The Attorney that? General was recused from oversight. Yes. Yes. So the Attorney General would have had to violate his own department's rules in order to comply with the President's order, correct? Well, I'm not going to get into uh, the subsidiary details. Okay. I just refer you again to page 91, 92 of the report. And if the Attorney General had followed through with the President's request, Mr. Mueller, it would have effectively ended your investigation into the President and his campaign, as you note on page 97, correct? Could you? you at page 97, you write, and I quote, taken together, the President's directives indicate that Sessions was being instructed to tell the special counsel to end the existing investigation into the president and his campaign with the special counsel being permitted to move forward with investigating election meddling for future elections. Is that correct? Generally true. Yes, sir. And it's a, an unsuccessful attempt to obstruct justice is still a crime. Is that correct? That is correct. And Mr. Lewandowski uh, tried to meet with the attorney general. Is that right? True. And he tried to meet with them in his office so he would be sure, certain there wasn't a public log of the visit. According to what we uh, gathered for the report. And the meeting never happened, and the president raised the issue again with Mr. Lewandowski, and this time he said, and I quote, if Sessions does not meet with you, Lewandowski should tell Sessions he was fired. Correct? Correct. So immediately following the meeting with the president, Lewandowski then asked Mr. Dearborn to deliver the message, who's the uh, former uh, chief of staff to Mr. Sessions, and Mr. Dearborn refuses to deliver it because he doesn't feel comfortable. Isn't that correct? Generally correct, yes. So just so we're clear, Mr. Mueller, two days after the White House counsel, Don McGahn, refused to carry out the president's order to fire you, the president directed a private citizen to tell the attorney general of the United States, who was recused at the time, to limit your investigation to future elections, effectively ending your investigation into the 2016 Trump campaign. Is that correct? Well, I'm not going to adopt your characterization. I'll say oh. that the facts well, as laid out in the report are accurate. Well, Mr. Mueller, in your report, you in fact write at page 99, 97, Substantial evidence indicates that the president's effort to have Sessions limit the scope of the special counsel's investigation to future elections interference was intended to prevent further investigative scrutiny of the president and his campaign conduct. Is that correct? Generally. And so, Mr. Mueller, you have seen the letter where a thousand former Republican and Democratic federal prosecutors have read your report and said anyone but the president who committed those acts would be charged with obstruction of justice. Do you agree with those former colleagues, a thousand prosecutors who came to that conclusion? Those prosecutors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, over here. Thanks. Mr. M Mr. Mueller, uh, you guys, your team wrote in the uh, report, quote, on, this is the top of page two, volume one, also on page 173, by the way. 
You said that you'd come to the conclusion that, quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities, close quote. That's accurate statement, right? That's accurate. And I'm curious, when did you personally come to that conclusion? Um, can you remind me uh, uh, which paragraph you're adverting to? Top of page two. On two? Volume one. Okay. Uh, and exactly which paragraph are you looking at on two? The investigation did not establish. Of course. I see it. Yes. See it? What was your question? My question now is, when did you personally reach that conclusion? Well, we were ongoing for two years. Uh, right. You were ongoing. You wrote it at some point during that two-year period. But at some point, you had to come to a conclusion that, uh, that I don't think there's, a, that there's not a conspiracy going on here. There was no conspiracy between this president. Um, I'm not talking about the rest of the president's team. I'm talking about this president and the Russians. I, as you understand, uh, in developing a criminal case, uh, you get pieces of information, pieces of information, witnesses, and the like, uh, and, uh, as you make your case. Right. And uh, when you make a decision on a particular case depends on a number of factors. Right. I understand. So I cannot that. say specifically that we reached a decision on a particular defendant uh, uh, at a particular point in time. But it was some time well before you wrote the report. Fair enough. I mean, you wrote the report dealing with a whole myriad of issues. Certainly, at some time prior to that report is when you reached the decision that, okay, with, with regard to the president himself, I don't find anything here. Fair enough? Well, I'm not certain I do agree with that. Uh, the, so you waited until the last minute when you were actually writing the report and said, oh, okay. Well, no, but there, there are uh, various uh, aspects of the development of a, 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 a uh, Sure, and that's my point. There are various aspects that, are, that happen, but somewhere along the pike, you will come to a conclusion there's no, there's no there there for this defendant. Isn't that right? So I, apparently, I can't, I can't speak you to can't, it. You can't say when. Fair enough. So, so you know, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm. I'm asking the the sworn witness, uh, Mr. Mr. Mueller. Evidence suggests that on May 10th, 2017, at approximately 7:45 a.m., six days before the DAG so Deputy Attorney General appointed you special counsel, Mr. Rosenstein called you and mentioned the appointment of a special counsel. Not not necessarily that you'd be appointed, but that you had a discussion of that. Is that is that true? Uh, May 10th, 2017. I I, uh, I don't have any. No, I don't have any knowledge of that occurring. You don't have any knowledge or you don't recall? I don't have any knowledge. Evidence also suggests I mean, that... given that what I saw you do, are you questioning that? Uh, uh, well, I, I just find it intriguing. Let me just tell you that there's evidence that suggests that that phone call took place and that that's what was said. So let's move to the next question. Evidence suggests that also on May 12, 2017, five days before the DAG appointed you special counsel, you met with Mr. Rosenstein in person. Did you discuss the appointment of a special counsel then? Not necessarily that you, but that there would be a special counsel. I, I've gone into waters that uh, uh, don't allow me to give you uh, uh, an answer to that uh, particular question. It relates to the internal discussions he would have in terms of indicting an individual. It has nothing to do with indictment. It has to do with special counsel and whether you discussed that with Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, evidence also suggests that on May 13th, four days before you were appointed special counsel, uh, you met with Attorney, former Attorney General Sessions and Rosenstein, and you spoke uh, about special counsel. Do you remember that? Not offhand, no. Okay. And on May 16th, the day before you were appointed special counsel, uh, you met with the President and uh, Rod Rosenstein. Do you remember having that meeting? Yes. And discussion of the position of FBI director took place. Do you remember that? Yes. And um, did you discuss at any time in that meeting uh, Mr. Comey's termination? No. Did you discuss at any time in that meeting uh, the potential appointment of a special counsel? Not necessarily you, but uh, it, just in general terms. I can't get into the discussions on that. How many times did you speak to Mr. Rosenstein before May 17th, which is the day you got appointed, uh, regarding the appointment of a special counsel? How many times prior to that did you, did you discuss? I can't tell with you how many times. Is that because you don't recall or are you, are you, are you just? I, I do not recall. Okay. That, that, thank you. Um, how many times did you speak with Mr. Comey about any investigations pertaining to Russia prior to May 17, 2017? Did you have Not any? At all. Zero? Zero. Okay. Now, my time is, my time is expired. So, uh, right. time of the gentleman is expired. The gentleman from California. Director Mueller, going back.